welcome to Focus on Finance. I'm your host, Melanie Parker. Focus on Finance is brought to you by the Consumer Education Division of The Right Legacy Group. Speaking of The Right Legacy Group, we have Andrew Sargent, a new team member at The Right Legacy Group, and you are an insurance advisor. Yes, ma'am. So what is that, Andrew? <laughs> uh, yeah, kind of a cryptic title, right? Right, what, right. What, what does that mean? Uh, essentially, what I'm what I do and what I plan to do with the Right Legacy Group is just simply kind of what it sounds like to advise people on their insurance, uh, primarily their property and casualty insurance. Things Which like is that. kind of a new component, right? That's right. not something the Right Legacy Group has done in the that's, past. That's correct. Great. Yeah, um, It's something that myself and Steve Wright kind of really got together with and, uh, and decided that this was the direction that we wanted to go um, was to offer to, um, to the people of Hardin County and to his current clients uh, property and casualty insurance, which that's a bit of a cryptic title too. Right. Uh, but essentially what that means is people's, your homes, your auto insurance, your boats, your landlord properties, your, your um, stuff. Yes, your stuff, your stuff. <laughs> All your stuff. Uh, and, and also the, the liability port portion of it, the uh, casualty side of it, the, things is for, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the uh, liability you can be found at fault for if something were to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so really that's what we're here to protect. Um, and uh, to answer the question, that's what I like to do. That's what I enjoy doing. It's kind of taking a look at people's uh, uh, insurance and making sure that um, they're well protected to mm -hmm. make sure that they are, um, protecting what it matters to them the most. Right. So, under the Right Legacy Group umbrella, mm -hmm. we we've talked about this recently. Um, you are able to. You don't work for any specific or or sell any particular product, That's so correct. to speak, of insurance. So, if you could talk a little bit about that, as far as what options you have to present to potential clients. Absolutely. Um, so we are going to be in what's called an independent insurance agency. Mm -hmm. um, so what that means is that um, we're not held captive to any particular uh, company. Um, there's a lot of companies out there that you held know, captive. <laughs> <laughs> I guess yeah. that I mean that makes sense. Yes, yeah. yes. It's a, um, a in the insurance world that literally is a term they use. You're a captive agent, which right. is um, you know we've tongue in cheek. You're right. Yeah, we've talked a lot about freedom, and <laughs> and this is definitely something that that we have a lot of freedom, and it kind of gives um, the people that we work with a lot of freedom as well too, um, because we are partnered up with uh, multiple na national companies, mm -hmm. and um, uh, where we can offer really the best for each client on there and we can kind of pick and choose what we think hey well this this company over here works for you for this um, let's kind of see if they can help you out um, this one over here will do better for you here we can kind of play around with things quite a bit um, where we're not really um, uh, as we've just been saying held captive to any particular one company where that's the only thing that we have to offer it really allows for a lot of freedom for um, our clientele to be able to say hey you know I don't I don't like that company okay well that's fine we can go sure. somewhere else we can we can we can make sure that uh, that you have what really what fits best for you um, and uh, uh, and to make the uh, make it custom tailored mm -hmm. just for kind of someone's needs rather than kind of just a, a blanket um, that, Perfect. that uh, kind of thing. Do you find that there are some companies and we don't we, we won't name any specifics <laughs> um, but some companies maybe offer better rates for say automobile insurance based on your credit score whereas someone else maybe offers better rates based on your driving history and, or your Absolutely. age or you know if you're male or female or any of that do each companies kind of have their where you can a better fit based on those things? Absolutely, yeah. There are some companies that uh, are uh, they really specify one or the other. Um, they kind of focus on one thing or the other. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, not to get into too very many specifics, but you know, I meet with the representatives of these companies, um, and a lot of times they will I will ask them, okay, well, well, what are you okay with? Mm -hmm. Well, what you know, if someone has had an accident, you know, are you okay with that? Um, and you know, some companies are well, we like that. Some companies are not. Um, so that's why I love it when someone can come to me. There's a lot of times they come in with very unique situations. They come sure. in with, well, I've had this or I've had you know that mm -hmm. happened to me or you know, um, uh, just had a situation here not long ago in which someone had actually said, well, someone borrowed my vehicle and wrecked it, you know, and so there's... That's <laughs> happened in my world. <laughs> <Yes>. So, you <laughs> know, there's just, uh, it, whenever things like that happen, um, having the flexibility to have, well, okay, well, this company may not be the best fit for you, but this one mm -hmm. over here will. Um, but yes, you know, to answer your question about whether they focus on certain things as well, too, there are some companies who, um, that they, they do focus a bit more on, on someone's driving record, mm -hmm. um, or they do 
you focus on um, a big one that people sometimes don't think about is um, how long you've had insurance. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes people without will, any lapses. Exactly, okay. exactly. Um, right. and, and truth be told, the majority of companies they all kind of usually look at a mixture of mm -hmm. everything, mm -hmm. and usually everything that we've said has play some factor in nearly everybody, sure. but there are some who are a bit more heavy handed than others about what it is and that's the beauty of what we can do is just say, well, hey, um, this one's not the best fit for you, but this one is and, and I really there. like that. That That's enticing to me as a insured person. Right. <laughs> um, we talked about, um, recently you and I chatted since we are in the same office right, now, yeah. about like state minimums. Yes when it comes to automobiles and those types of things. And I'm one of those, I like to keep my pennies in my pocket. Right. And I, you know, when I called to get my insurance, I didn't have an agent. Right. I just did everything online, on the phone, and I just, my car's paid for. Right. So what is the minimum that I, I require to be, make the state of Kentucky happy? And that's what I got. Right. So, Tell me, what, what are the pros and cons of that? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there's not that many pros. <laughs> the yeah. one pro would be really- My payment is, amount. Right, yeah, right. Just, just, yeah. just overall cost savings. But um, really, um, the way that I've described it to people is if someone gets state minimum liability insurance mm -hmm. for their auto automobile, since that's specifically what we're talking about, um, since if you get that, um, you really, uh, you're saving pennies and you are risking your big dollars. Right. Um, and, and that's, that Which really is. really hurt my feelings. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. And, and, yeah. and uh, the idea behind it is, uh, and a lot of people don't realize this, um, you know, uh, Kentucky, uh, people have heard the term that it's uh, a no-fault state. Mm -hmm. uh, that term's a little what deceiving. What does that mean? Uh, no-fault is kind of a general overall term for um, uh, saying that Kentucky subscribes to a system known as personal injury protection, mm -hmm. or PIP. And I won't get into too much of the boring stuff for you, but okay. essentially it just means that your own insurance company is responsible for at least a portion of your own injuries um, whenever you, um, if, whoever, if you get into an accident, whoever's at fault for that, your own insurance company is going to pick up at least some of the bill. Okay. Um, usually that caps out though at mm -hmm. a pretty low amount, and so then it goes to whoever is at fault for that accident. So, um, you know, the term no fault is a little deceptive mm -hmm. um, as far as what it is, you know, uh, describing exactly what actually goes on in the state of Kentucky. Um, uh, so we do establish fault, and a lot of times the injuries that someone can sustain as a result of a car accident um, usually are can be sub sometimes substantial. Mm -hmm. And um, the issue with that, uh, whenever you have state minimum liability coverage, which in the state of Kentucky, um, it is what's called 2550-25. Again, I won't get down to I the boring parts. I think I've seen parts. that on my policy. <laughs> yeah. uh, I won't get down too much into the weeds of that, but mm -hmm. essentially that just means that um, they're only going to pay up to $25,000 per person in the event of an accident, and no more than $50,000 per accident and then no more than $25,000 for someone's uh, other person's property damage, like mm -hmm. if you hit someone's vehicle or run off the road, hit right. somebody's house. And the whole like reason that. I was excited about having you as a host on this show um, is w last week. <laughs> Yeah. Look how yes. many car accidents there were. Right. Some were little, some were big. You know, there were, it was your fault, it wasn't your fault. But a lot of people right now are dealing with insurance issues. Absolutely. And, and, uh, uh, if you don't have that coverage in place, that's whenever it can really mean, you know, the, uh, the bad things for you. A lot of times people will come in and they're more concerned about, well, um, uh, is my car covered? Um, and I say that's definitely something to be concerned about mm -hmm. because a vehicle is a major financial uh, investment. Sure. And in a lot of times losing that is a major financial hit for a lot of people. Um, but the way that I have described is I said I would rather see someone have a $10,000 setback um, versus a, uh, a 100000 or $500,000 sure, setback. Sure, paying someone's hospital bills Exactly, or exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and really, um, you know, to, to go back to the part about the liability, whenever you have that, um, you are putting yourself at just such great risk of, you know, potentially being sued and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, facing the consequences of having uh, someone else's liability. You sure, know, as a result and that of is our society yeah, absolutely. as a whole. Absolutely, and, and, and it really is, um, you know, uh, I'll tell this short little anecdote and just kind of and, and move on from there, but, you know, we knew of a situation at one point in which um, someone was following all the, the laws of the road and was doing everything as well as they could, and um, unfortunately, a pedestrian stepped off the road right in front of them. 
and mm. um, it, it was, you know, every, kind of every driver's worst nightmare. Yes, it was yeah. a hazy situation, obviously, um, um, and in that situation, the driver was found legally at fault for that accident. Wow. Um, that person's medical bills ended up being well over six hundred thousand um, dollars. And so, you know, when we talk about, I'm glad the person lived. It, absolutely. Yes. Yes. That's the most important thing. Yes. Yes. Um, but uh, that person, they said their, their medical bills ended up being over six hundred thousand dollars. And the way you think about that, the coverage we were, coverage we were just talking about, mm -hmm. your insurance company would have only paid out twenty five thousand of that. Right. That person has every legal right to pursue that versus, mm -hmm. you know, through uh, various methods, um, you wow. know, wage garnishments and um, all kinds of things like wow. that. Wow. You know, yeah, they have a lot of, lot of options with that. So that is why the, when we have conversations about things, you know, one of the things that I have respected Steve about so much, um, you know, in, within the Right Legacy Group is he has been doing for nearly the last 25 years of building people's legacies. Right. And really, you know, above our door, it says creating lasting legacies. Mm -hmm. Um, and the truth of the matter is a lot of times those legacies can be shattered in just a matter of a few moments like right um, yeah. when, it, when calamity happens and mm -hmm. I consider it you know my responsibility to as he's built these up and he has done that is it's it's our job to protect it and to do it correctly right. um, you know I always tell people I'm not the type to tell insurance boogeyman stories about <laughs> things that never happened yeah. but the truth of the matter is these things do happen and do. I consider it my job to make sure that people are at least aware of you know what the risk that they're taking if they they drive around without the proper sure. kind of coverages. All right, we we covered the the automobile and motorcycle and all those things that the things that can happen when you're traveling on the road, and based on our terrible weather right. last um, last week and the the car pileups and yeah. you know the slidings bad. and getting home from the office last week and seeing all the cars on the side of the road. Um, while we're talking about weather, and let's talk about the tornadoes right. that yeah. we had recently, and yeah. it's, it's Maysville, right. Kentucky was just demolished right. because of tornadoes. Right. So there, that unfortunately you don't think about your coverage. I think so much. I mean, I'm sure there are proactive people out there, right, right. but there are the Pollyannas like me in the world that think, ah, oh, nothing terrible is going to happen. Right. I, I yeah. live a good life. You know, it's fine. Yeah. But life happens. Absolutely. And so let's talk about um, these people that lost their homes. Yeah, yeah it was absolutely devastating to, to see um, just the destructive capabilities of nature right. and, and what really and can happen. And there's nothing, nothing you, you can, can do, do to prevent it. it. No, no, nothing. No. And, um, that was something that, you know, just, you know, from a humanitarian standpoint, we look at it and we go, um, oh, the, the, not just the loss, I mean, the loss of life is the most important thing, first, first and foremost. Yes. Then the loss of livelihoods and the loss mm -hmm. of, uh, of just the, the, the things that, that matter to people. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, you know, uh, someone's home is sometimes that's, well, it's home. You know, right. that's, that's where they go to, to unwind or to go to relax mm -hmm. and to have that destroyed. Well, and they, that's where they store their memories. Right. Their right. pictures and their important papers. And, you know, as adults, we can shed our tears and when, uh, when we've had that huge loss. Right. But that is home to children. Right. And that right. is their safe place. And right. it's now gone. Yes. And do we really want to have to worry about the financial on top of all of right. that emotional right. loss? Um, the conversation I've been having with a lot of people recently, especially in regards to these tornadoes, because I've gotten emails from former clients simply saying, hey, you know, we would think it'd be a relatively obvious thing, but is my home covered for tornadoes? You know, right. and um, that should be a conversation that you're having with your agent. We said, should, that should be, yeah, excuse me, that should be a conversation that you're having with the person who mm -hmm. is taking care of your insurance Absolutely. for you. And um, let me just interject here mm -hmm. when you say former clients, it's from your previous employer. Yes, <laughs> yes. When you go to a new a new place, you know, you have to reestablish clients. Right, so. right. Maybe I should even scratch that. Or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> but, um, uh, but yes, I mean, I, people are concerned about whether or not that, you know, they are covered um, mm -hmm. for something like that. Um, and that's a, that's an important conversation to have with you know your insurance advisor advisor or you know your insurance agent um, about what kind of coverages that you have. Um, in the past um, 12 to 18 months, we have seen just such a huge uh, uptick in the cost of rebuilding a home. Right. Um, and wood um, is an issue, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It's, yes. I mean, the, just the fundamental basics. Right. Yes. Right. I mean, concrete has has gone up. There's mm -hmm. all been all kinds of things that have that have caused the the cost of rebuilding a home to go up, and 
um, while insurance companies they try to make sure that they are you know keeping up with that trend of mm -hmm. things um, really I encourage all homeowners to you know pull out your homeowners insurance documents and look at it and say how much is my home actually covered for um, you know there's uh, there's been instances in which someone has looked at it and said well hey uh, you know I, I you know I'm covered for 250,000 but you know if I'm doing the math on this it would take 300 or 350,000 in order to rebuild my home that's definitely a conversation that you want to be making sure that you're having with your insurance agent mm -hmm. with um, you know that uh, if you I always tell people I offer complimentary stuff so if you wanted to have me look at some we get your insurance um, with no no pressure to do anything absolutely. whatsoever just, just a look cup at, of coffee and yes, a conversation absolutely yes. and just say well hey this is you know this is adequate coverage or hey you may want to you know call up your agent mm -hmm. and tell them hey what can we do to increase this um, because I, I would hate for someone to be in a situation like for those in in, uh, in Mayfield that were uh, completely devastated mm -hmm. and completely destroyed. It was not just a damage to the home, just, just destroyed. And they have to rebuild from scratch. And uh, when that's the case, those numbers matter yes. as far as how much coverage that you have. Um, would never want to put, have see anybody in a situation in which um, they're, you know, three quarters of the way through re rebuilding the house and the insurance money runs out. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just something that we never want to have someone You want to them, as with. Judge Judy likes to say, made whole. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yes. And, and that really is what's supposed to be part of, you know, the homeowner's insurance package, if you will, mm -hmm. um, for the majority of companies that really um, uh, write, in, write homeowner's insurance. Is, it's supposed to be what's called replacement cost, which mm -hmm. means we're getting it back, someone back into the same situation, the back into the home that, um, that they have. Mm -hmm. um, so just review your insurance documents, make sure that that you know those you know your information is updated make sure it's correct um, just so that in, in the event of that that big calamity that big thing happening that you're in good shape another tip I give a lot of people um, for the contents of the home because some people also don't realize you know your homeowner policy is supposed to cover the contents of your home mm -hmm. as well too um, you know and the way what we define as contents is the way that I say it is if you picked up the house shook it upside down uh, what would fall out of the windows and the doors ah, that's that's that is a, a great analogy yeah that's a good yes, way to, to yes. think about what is considered contents of the home mm -hmm. um, so one of the tips that I give people is, you know, just sometime I always joke and say when the house is good and clean, um, take out your phone and turn it on video mode and just take Smart. a video, walk around the house, mm -hmm. taking a video of all of the furniture you have, your appliances, any valuables that you have, uh, even open up your closet and just show some clothes and, um, you know, firearms, things like that. Smart. Yeah, uh, it, kind of zoom up on appliance tags um, and things that would help to identify certain things. Um, because that's going to help not only your adjuster to know what to uh, to replace in the event of that calamity, but it's also going to help you to know. Mm -hmm. You know, during the during the, something that like that happening, um, you're not going to be thinking straight, and you know you're going to be uh, possibly a year, two years down the road, and you're going to go, wait a minute, I have this. No, I don't anymore because mm -hmm. I didn't think about it at the time. Right. Um, so it's always a good idea to have that, and I always tell people, uh, you know, upload that to the cloud or send it to somebody. Um, keep it somewhere that's not just on your phone because mm -hmm. that phone can be destroyed as well too in the event of something really bad happening. Very so true. Uh, it's always good to have that somewhere um, and to be able to show that adjuster and say, hey, this is what I have, so he can go through there and make sure that he's getting you back into the same situation that you Perfect. were in. Perfect. Okay. Let me see. I hope this isn't a complicated question. No, no. So let's say, because it is a seller's market right now. Right, right. Obviously, we're, we're all aware of that. Um, let's say I purchased a home for $100,000, mm -hmm. and that home is insured at its value when I purchased it at $100,000. Right. Mm -hmm. So with it being a, I could potentially put that $100,000 home on the market right now, and with the market being what it is, sell it for $175,000. Mm -hmm. So is that something if I'm can, should I sit down and look at my insurance? Should I continue to be insured at that $100,000? Or do I need to look at the market, current market value of my home and insure it for that amount? That's a great question. So uh, really, um, a lot of people ask me about market value. Well, my home is worth this much. And mm -hmm. truth be told, two years ago, two, three years ago, um, it was kind of the opposite problem of what you're sure. kind of what you're proposing, yes. where the replacement cost of the home would be significantly higher than the market value of the mm -hmm. house. And I would have people, you know, who would say, "Well, I don't want to insure my house for, 
you know, $150,000. It's only worth 100. Right. Um, and, Which is valid. Right. And <laughs> yes. exa absolutely. And yeah. I always have to explain to them, we don't insure something for market value because market mm. value fluctuates. It goes right. up, it goes down. It can, we can be great today and, and terrible tomorrow. Sure. So we don't go off of that. We go off of how much it costs to replace the home. Exactly. Uh, and, and really, that is what your insurance contract is designed to do. Okay. It is designed to uh, replace the home, not necessarily buy you one just like it, not necessarily, um, you know, uh, buy one nicer or, or you know, not you know not as good or, or better sure. or in a better neighborhood Make or thing you like whole, that. Exactly. Like just Judy says. Exactly. Yes. It's just simply to. Um, uh, if you have something, um, we want to make sure that you can get back into it, into an equal condition than, than what it is. Um, and really, that's, that's the way it's designed to. So that's a, that's a good question. Um, it, it is definitely something that we're seeing. Um, it, they're both rising at the same time. The market value and the replacement costs are rising at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so thankfully, it's been pretty close to it, but it's at least a com worth a conversation with your insurance advisor or your insurance agent um, to make sure that you have enough coverage for the house. Um, right. Uh, and usually you don't have a problem with market value, but that's at least a conversation you should be having with your individual agent. Excellent. And I like the fact that, yes, you're an insurance agent, right? but you are more so an insurance advisor. That's why we chose the term. Yes. yes. And I, because to me, the word agent, an insurance agent is someone that that is going to sell me a policy right, right. and that necessary we have to have it it's required by law right, right. <laughs> and we absolutely have to have it but in, to me an insurance advisor is just a little bit a step above that because knowing you and knowing the right legacy group and I know there are others of your ilk in our community that you will look at what people have and you're not trying to sell them anything. Right. You're going to advise them, look at, open their books and their policies and advise them on what's best for them. Right. And I, I think that's, the term advisor is, is much stronger than yes. the word agent, in my and opinion. That is really why we chose it, because, um, you know, my approach to helping people and to talking to clientele is not in a way of, well, what can I, what can I sell them? What can I really get out of them? Um, but I want them to uh, leave my office, to leave a conversation with me uh, better informed mm -hmm. and perhaps even in a better place than what sure. they were whenever they came. And there's been times that I've had conversations with people, with some of my own family, who they've, they've brought me, you know, well, this is what I have for insurance. And I've looked at it. And I have said, um, you're in good shape. And you've advised them. Yeah, you're, you're in good shape, you <laughs> yes. know, and, and say uh, you, you're getting an excellent premium for the coverages that you have. Mm -hmm. um, I've had some conversations with some family members in which I have said, well, listen, I, you're getting a great premium. I would simply upgrade these coverages, get yourself mm -hmm. in a little better position. Um, but uh, beyond that, you're in great shape, that right. kind of thing. And really, that's my desire to do. It mm -hmm. is not really to come in here and to um, try to try to push someone to do this or twist someone's arm. Um, never is my, is my intention, just like it's never the intention of everybody at the Right Legacy Group. We're here to help people. We're here to advise people on right. what's going to put them in the best um, shape possible. Steve's been doing it for, like I said, for the last 25 years mm -hmm. of making sure someone is in the best uh, financial place they can be in. I just want to make sure that they're in the best financial place they can be in from an in insurance perspective. Um, and, and like you said, that's why we chose that that title. Mm -hmm. Just uh, I like I'm, it. I'm not here to I'm not here to push anybody to do anything. I'm here to you know help people out and make sure that they're in a good shape from an insurance right. standpoint. And that's exactly why I invited you to be on the show, and um, why you do what you do at the office now is education. Yes. Yeah. Just educate folks. Yes. And. Um, you and, and Steve Wright are so much the same. You're like a younger version of him, which is awesome. Is That's a best, best, one of the best compliments I could receive. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's genuine. And, but you, you just want to sit down with people and say, what are your goals? Where do you want to be? Right. And let me help you with that journey. Let me help you lay out that path to get Absolutely. there. And if it's a mutually, mutually beneficial um, scenario, great right and if not i i see people leave the office regularly with steve and now with you that are happy yeah did they sign paperwork maybe maybe not maybe they just brought in their paperwork and you looked at it and you were like you're good to go Absolutely. and you give them that confidence and um, that peace of mind which as we get older is a big deal as we create these generations um, of family and, the, and spread our family tree, peace of mind is a really big deal. 100%. Um, 
one of the things that they teach us uh, during the uh, licensing process of mm -hmm. whenever you're getting um, your insurance license um, is they, they talk about the difference between really what, what we talked about before, the difference between being a captive agent being an, versus being an independent agent. And truth be told, a captive agent works for the company. Mm -hmm. That's their job is to, um, to grow the company, to make the company right. more money. Um, and no and, shade. Right, I mean, absolutely, you know, absolutely. They, they are creating a, a service or a product that is required by law. So right. they are helping people 100%. adhere to the laws and, and there's a place for that. And some of the best agents I know are exclusive agents. Sure. Who, that, that's what they do. So um, there's, like you said, absolutely no shade toward any of them. But the beauty of being independent is that we can be on the customer side. We can right. be on that client side that says, hey, um, you know, we are, uh, we're, we're fighting for you. Mm -hmm. We're not necessarily fighting for the company. We're not. We're not trying to be on their side. We're on your side, yes. and so that it's if, about protection. Absolutely. Let's protect everybody. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And so, it, you know, the way for me to do that is to do what is absolutely in best for the client, and uh, not necessarily what's in the best for you know the multi-million-dollar company that right. that is out there. Yes, yes, and I can see what a huge benefit it is for you myself i will i will share i borrowed a coworker's car and i'm trying to get to tape a show <laughs> and rear-ended somebody uh -huh. at a red light mm. in her car it was awful <laughs> that, yeah, i cried it was devastating yes and um pouring down rain friday the 13th all of the things <laughs> and the, the the officer that came was phenomenal and um, I was just like, you know, I have insurance and I just thought I can make this right. I can make my coworker whole because I have great insurance right. for my car that I just didn't have access to that day. And, and I'll use my insurance and, and he, no, the insurance stays with the car. Mm -hmm. So I just want people who like myself did not know <laughs> right. that if you borrow someone else's vehicle or you loan your vehicle out, everyone's taking a risk. Right. And, and a lot of times I've had people call and ask, well, can I let someone borrow my vehicle? Um, and the truth of the matter is you, you definitely want to ask that question to right. your agent because sometimes policies prohibit it. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. Um, in my experience, the majority of companies are okay with it mm -hmm. um, and that they will cover you, you know, in the event someone borrows your vehicle and, and they get into an accident, um, that, you know, the liability and the coverage to that vehicle will, will extend to that person. But that's definitely a conversation you need to have mm -hmm. with that, um, with your, your agent to make sure that your particular policy covers that exactly. kind of uh, risk. And that is a great conversation. We are in instant gratification society. Absolutely, yeah. And it is so convenient on a 10-minute break at the office to go online, right. do your due diligence research, and um, pick insurance and, and right. do all of yes. these things. Yeah. But it's so much better, in my, my opinion, to be able to go and sit across from someone and say, this is what I need. Right. This is what I want. How can you help me? These are my experiences. And have a conversation as opposed to clicking a bunch of boxes online. Big difference. 100%. Uh, there's, um, I always tell people, because sometimes whenever I'm talking to someone about their insurance, they get almost a little embarrassed because I'll ask them, do you know what this means? Do you know what it means when I say bodily injury liability? And I'll be honest, I know. Right. <laughs> I have it, no problem with saying that. Usually one of two things happen. Someone says no, they're honest with me, right. or someone says yes, and, and they really don't. Right. <laughs> uh, and so uh, I always say there's absolutely no reason to be embarrassed that you don't know these things. Mm -hmm. um, I had to go get a license for it. I had yes. to study for you've it. Been, I had you've to, been to school. Yeah. So I had, I had I'm to, not ashamed. <laughs> That's why I, I have you. Uh, yes, yes. I had to, had to go and do it. I didn't know these things before, you know, that I, I went and became educated about it as well, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a bit of a dangerous thing to kind of just rely upon your own expertise and to say, yes. well, can I decipher what these terms mean in my insurance? Mm -hmm. well, you know, uh, whenever I'm online, you know, when it asks me, what do I want for property damage liability? What does that mean? You know, um, it's really a, a kind of a, a dangerous game to, to do it that. Is. And it, 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 it's very dangerous. Yeah. And we're out of time. Yeah. I hate it. I mean, oh, wow. you uh, know, I thought... You know, insurance, oh, uh, insurance, but you have to have it, folks. Yeah. You have an agent, that's great. Um, have an advisor, in my opinion, that's a little bit better. <laughs> um, but just handle your business, preferably face-to-face -face if you can. 
And thank you, Andrew. I appreciate Clearly. your time. I know that, you know, they're beating down your door now. So we do appreciate you um, chiseling out a little time for us. Give Andrew a call at the Right Legacy Group or whoever you need to get your answers and make sure you're taking care of safety first. Absolutely. Thank you, folks. Thank Have a good you. day. Thank you.